new example so we can take a look at media recording in the phone gap framework. Unlike the previous media examples, in this case we are going to use the actual phone gap framework. The reason for that is we need to interact with the device hardware. And when we interact with the device hardware, that's exactly where phone gap comes into play. In other words, we don't have the option to use the basic HTML5 commands like we did to play the audio or control the audio with the audio API using JavaScript. So this time we're going to be using the phone gap framework in earnest. So go ahead and here's our HTML. I'm going to clean this up the way I normally do. We're not using their uh, included style sheet, so I'll take that out. And this div is not something we're going to be using either. However, we will be using the Cordova script, quite literally using it for this example. So we need to make sure that's attached. So the option to record audio as part of the media framework works by interacting with the device's media library. Every device has some type of media library. I'm talking specifically about iOS and Android here. Unfortunately, this part of PhoneGap isn't functional with other types of devices. So this is not one, at least at the time of this recording, that you could do with with uh, Windows 8 or 7 or one of the other parts of the framework. I'm actually doing a iOS example here. So it's going to interact with the media framework. So once we record the audio, it's basically going to happen using whatever tool is used to record audio on the device and saved using that tool as well. So this will function a little bit differently on iOS and Android, but give you the same result. So I think in our body, I'm going to start by creating two buttons. The first button is going to be our record audio button. So we'll call this BTN record. And the second button, of course, is going to be our stop recording button, BTN stop. And we'll actually have the word stop on that button. Pretty simple interface. All right, so we've got our Cordova script here. So let's go ahead and insert our own script tags directly after that. Perfect. And now we'll have our anonymous onload function. And this is the one where we're going to attach the device ready. Document, add event listener. We're listening for the device ready event. And in this case, it's important to use the device ready event because none of this is going to work until everything has loaded within the device. All right, so we'll go ahead and call a function called init. And as always, we'll set the third argument to false. So in our init function this time, we're going to make references to our two buttons. So document, and this one is btn record. And we'll use our add event listener method. We're going to be listening for a click. We'll call record audio. Set use capture to false. BTN stop. Add. Hopefully at this point you could pretty much do this part in your sleep. Click. We'll stop recording. Again, using method names that are very, very clear as to what the function of that method is. All right, so now we have most of our setup done. And let's go ahead and create our function signatures here. So we have the record audio function. And we have the stop recording function. And the implementation of these is probably a little simpler than you're imagining. 
To manage the recording, we're going to need a media controller object. So let's go ahead up here and create a global reference. And then here in init, I guess we can go ahead and instantiate it. So the media controller equals new media. Now there's a couple of different arguments here. The first one is the name of the media, which is the name of our file. So let's go ahead and call this recording audio.mp3. And then we have two callback functions or two delegates. We'll call them success and error. Now this may look strange, but here's what happens. If we successfully record the audio, we're going to have our success function. In the event of an error, we're going to run a function called error. So we need to set up two more functions here called success and error. Now for the error function, what happens is the actual error is passed as an object to the function itself. So I'm going to go ahead and put in here a variable or a reference that can receive that error. All right, so I think we've got all the functions we've need, we need here. So now when the record button that we created down here, btn record, is clicked, this listener is going to call record audio. So we made our media controller global and we instantiated it in a knit. So on the media controller object, I'm simply going to call the function that will record audio and that's start record. Now that'll go to whatever media controller your device has. Now to stop control, stop recording the audio on the media controller, we're going to call stop record. And then basically the device takes over. Now in our success and error functions, we'll have to deal with the actual success or error. So we could output something to the user or we could simply log out to the console. I'm going to use a console log here and I'm going to say audio successful. Now with the error here, we actually can get a more robust description of the error. And this certainly can be helpful if uh, we have to do any debugging. So I'm going to use an alert here. And first of all, we get the error code. And we get that from the object dot code. And that can be helpful to search. Plus, we also get an error message. That's, of course, generated by the phone gap framework. And that kind of let us trace problems as they occur. So if we have an error here, we're going to output whatever the error code and the message is in an alert box. That'll help us with debugging. And also, if there's some type of runtime situation, it'll give the user a clue as to what's going on. Now, of course, this is the type of project that needs to be tested live on a device. There's really no way around it. And that's because your emulator or simulator doesn't have a way to detect audio through the microphone. So let's go ahead here and let's get our application going. There it is. Bring that in. And let's open that in Xcode. And, you know, while we can test and see if it builds in Xcode, again, you're going to have to build this and test this on your Android device or on your iOS device and see how well it works. All right, so there's record audio in there. Got everything we need. So let's go ahead and set this to the iPhone. We'll use the iPhone 6 simulator. And I'm going to click Run. And that's going to take a few moments to build and compile. And there's our error code, which gives us an opportunity to talk about something that's idiosyncratic to iOS. Believe it or not, on Android, this would have worked fine. However, in iOS, the audio API can't create this audio file. 
So what we've got to do is we've got to now go into the code and create that audio file ourselves. All right, so let's go back up here. Also for Mac, you should be using a WAV file, a WAV, not an MP3. Another small note here. So what we're going to do is inside our device ready function, so right here, we're going to go ahead and create the file that we need to work with. So I'm going to put this entry right here. And we're going to call from window request file system. Now what this does is it gives us access to the local file system on the device. And then we're going to call local file system dot persistent. So files that are going to remain there. Next argument is zero. Next argument is the callback function that's going to run if we are able to create the actual file. And then we've got a fail function that I'm going to denote like this, which means we're just not going to do anything if we get a fail. All right, so there we've got our initial request. We'll terminate that line. So now we've got to deal with the callback function. Now I'm going to put the callback function right here in the got fs variable. Now you may not have seen this style before, but you can also set a variable to an anonymous function. And notice here we're keeping this within the init function. So what's going to happen again is GotFS is going to call, and here's GotFS, and we've signed that the function, which is past the actual file system. Now I'm going to go ahead just for the sake of time, do a little copy and paste here for what goes into this particular function. Just like this. Perfect. Deal with my spacing a little bit here. And then we'll talk about everything that's going on in this kind of weird looking function. All right, looks like we have just about everything. There's our function fail. Move that in there. Okay, I think we've got everything. The only thing I need is a semicolon right there. Okay, good. So now, here in GodFS, we'll call from the file system root, get the file, and there's the name of our file. Now, in this case, it's blank wave. We want to use recording audio dot wave, just like that. Now, we have a little jQuery packet here of options. The create is set to true. Exclusive is set to false, which creates if it doesn't exist. If we create it successfully, we'll create a variable that gives us the URI and log that out, so where it's located on the device. We have our fail function, which again is blank. We close the parentheses here, which is closing actually this parenthesis, and then we close the whole function. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a try. Now it looks kind of messy, but it works pretty good. So let me reset my emulator here, not a bad idea. So, whoops, we got that. And reset content and settings. Not a bad idea to do that between tries. To take just a moment to reset the emulator, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, we'll click run. Hopefully for the last time, our build succeeded. And here comes our simulator. Hopefully. There it is. Oh, and we built without any error. The error is no longer popping up. 
So now we could probably go ahead and actually test on the device. Again, since there's no microphone here, we can't actually record on the simulator itself. But now you've got a window into using the built-in microphone hardware using HTML5 